everybody. Welcome to the show, our top 10 list. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Mike Mello Delicio. Hello. Oh, wait, were we supposed to be doing that? Hi, right, I'm Tom Hi. Vassell. And Tom welcome Schill. to okay. another top 10 list from mm. the Dice. So let me ask you guys this here. Um, I'm, I have a comment here from Facebook where yeah. uh, a gentleman says, games are not really relaxing for us. I've never heard anyone low on energy say, let's play a board game. I sleep or watch TV while trying to sleep. Nor does anyone with an excess of energy relax by playing a board game. Games are meant to be challenging and give you a little bit of stress. If wow. you need to relax from high energy, you go swimming or something. I've never been relaxed while playing a game because otherwise I'd call it an activity. In that case, Telstrations, hands down, maybe even say the same thing. Maybe any game where you mess up the rules and it doesn't matter, but instead makes you laugh at people's mistakes, like say anything, code names and time's up, maybe they could be stressful in the players due to the timer and the death card. But he basically says here, you can't relax and play a game. What are your guys' thoughts? I say some people can't swim. Uh, <laughs> and he can. And he goes swimming to relax. I'm sure those people would not be relaxed when you throw them into the ocean. So different strokes, <laughs> different folks. I will say, though, that when we were going through this list, uh, when I was picking games, I would pick a game and go, oh, that's relaxing. And then I'd say, ah, well, not quite, because here I'm a little, mm. you know, on jitters and stuff. So it was not, I went through a lot of games that I discounted for one reason or the other. I was trying to pick, again, the most relaxed I am when playing these games. Right. And that's the thing. Anytime you have these themed top 10 lists, you kind of have to think, how am I going to order these? You know, you can go the, the the games I like the best of this list. You can go alphabetical if you want the comments to blow up. Uh, or you can do what I did, which is <laughs> I I just took the 10 out of my short list of, I think, 18. I had that top 10 that were, I felt, the most relaxing. So my number one, I feel like, is the game that most gives me the, it fits this theme. It's not necessarily the game I like the most. Uh, it's just the one I feel is most relaxing. I think at the end of the day, what this person was trying to get at is that um, it's possible that a game is not the best way to to de-stress, I think is mm. the thing that they're sort of combining the word relaxing and thinking they mean like de-stressing, I, I believe. It's not like getting a massage playing a, a game, right? No, it's not the same no. thing. It's just a game that is not going to stress you out, right? It's not a game that is going to, when when as you are playing it, give you anxiety, turn angst, worry mm -hmm. about your things being taken from you. That's ultimately what I went with because that's as good as it gets. I mean, you know, part of what they were saying is, is true. Um but these are games that, as I'm playing them, I feel myself uh, unworried about the mm -hmm. game, about anything yeah. else. Whether I win, I lose, it doesn't really matter. The game's pretty. It's fairly soothing. And I enjoy the experience of playing it because it doesn't, you know, burden me with any, you know, necessities, any requirements from me. Right. So ultimately, that's kind of what I was going with. Yeah. yeah, relaxing uh, can be different. Like I, this is a very personal list, right? There are some games yes. that are relaxing to me, and you'll go, "How is that relaxing at all?" Of course, you're wrong. Are we allowed uh, to disagree right. with you? Then is ultimately oh. the main question. Yes, because this is a dice tower top ten. <laughs> and I believe that's Baby. a requirement for. Well, yes. Well, I believe you're ten through seven are straight trash, but I'll wait mm -hmm. till you say them out loud. <laughs> I I really think there's at least three on my list that Z's gonna highly disagree with. He'll he'll say how how can you think that's that's relaxing at all? Uh, or yeah, well, I'm, I'm very interested. On list. I'm very interested to hear what you two have for this. I do feel I do feel some crossovers on the horizon. I I, I could be wrong, but I do feel like there'll be at least two crossovers potentially among all three of us. All right. well, somebody in the comments just said I think solo games seem to be best in this category. I guess that's a thing, right? <laughs> it's the other Could human. be. <laughs> as long as there's no Could other be. humans, it's relaxing. <laughs> oh, I've had some stressful solo games, I can tell you that. But yeah, I understand what they're getting at, I think. Yeah. Are we ready? 
Ready to rock and roll. Number 10. All right, All that, right so my number 10. Okay, sorry. My number 10 I, is the newest game on my list. It's it's brand new, actually. And this is a game about having a lovely hot beverage and brewing a lovely hot beverage. No, not coffee, but chai. So chai is a game that is really light. Uh, on the scale of complexity, it's a super light game. Um, almost floats away uh, light. But... I feel it really suits this theme very well. I mean, you you are literally going to a market and collecting ingredients, t- trying to brew uh, the, the best cup of chai. Certainly the aesthetics of the game help convey that theme. It's very pastoral feeling and muted colors, but still, you know, pops. Um, again, I, I can't emphasize enough that it's a very light game. But I think for this type of a list, most of my choices here are skewing very light. And uh, so I think Chai, uh, while new and I haven't played it as much as the other games on my list, I think suits this list very well. So that is Chai. Yeah, that's a good one, I think. Uh, from the brief looks I've given the game, it, I got that vibe from it. I haven't played it yet, but um, mm. I can see where you're coming from with that one, yeah. Yeah, it makes right, sense. I, I don't like it, but yeah, when you put it in that context, it makes more sense. Mm-hmm. All right, my number 10, I'm curious here if you guys will agree with me or not, uh, but um, my number 10 is Near and Far. And the ah, reason oh. I picked it is because I find it to be to retain the aspects I enjoy from sort of traditional fantasy books in which there was not a lot of wordplay. They just sort of mm. like very clearly told you what was going on the story was very straightforward like one day steve woke up and noticed it was raining he went outside like there's no flowery like sort of build up to it you know what i mean right like the book or the story just like tells you exactly what's next um and i get that feeling of an old story an old kind of almost you know, a young adult kind of fiction from it mm-hmm. the world is very welcoming even like the even when things go wrong they're not so bad, is I guess what I'm yeah. saying. And so I find that to be easy to intake, easy to sort of like go along for the ride. You know, you're doing things and every now and every few turns you go, I'm going to go exploring. Read, read me a little bit, you know. Um, <laughs> right. So I find that pretty relaxing. It's kind of an easy game to get into. And uh, well... Hmm. It might be one of the more rules-heavy ones from my list, ultimately, but um, it's just kind of, it's a chill game. It's it's pretty, and it's easy to get into. So, my number 10, near and far. Hmm. You know, I want to I argue with, with you guys, but you're all making it hard to argue. All right, so good. I'm, we're all chill. With my coffee. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I, I think that's an interesting choice. I wouldn't have thought of it, but an interesting choice. <laughs> Wow, you no, slammed you, it's Steve. Good. No, that, that no, was a no, condescending like smackdown. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't as condescending as it sounded. But but yeah, yeah, it's it's an interesting choice. Mm. <laughs> I did it again. All right, my number ten. <laughs> this is uh, all right, Delicio. I see what's up. <laughs> I could put a lot of party. I'm sure games your your list. other ones are better, Z. Sorry, I could put a lot of party games in the list, but I did not. But I I did put a couple, and this is well two. Um, and this is one of the two, and that's just one. Because in just one, I just, no one ever cares. Part of it's because yeah. it's cooperative, and we never play with the score. Yeah. But everyone just writes down words, you flip them, you laugh, you guess the word, and you go on. There's like no stress. It's like one of the less, least stressed party games I play. Wow. Mm. That's crazy. I I. What, you think it's stressful? Strong disagreement feelings with you. I do. I, in fact, when you said there's a lot of party games I could have put on this list, I was like, really? Games that are <laughs> relaxing that to play? Yeah. Well, well, okay. But no, but I'm telling you, when I play just one, everyone just has a good time. No one really cares. Everyone just writes a word down. You try it out thick. If you fail, no one matters. There's no points. I mean, there is points to some degree, but everyone just kind of chills and just goes along. I, guess, I like it. I guess for me... 
when I'm the one writing a word and giving somebody else a clue, I don't care. And if I cross with mm-hmm. someone, I'm like, ah, oh, we hit. Who cares? If I'm the one guessing, I definitely feel stressed. I get yeah. one guess to try yeah, to figure out what everybody meant it. by writing like T and, you know, a hula hoop and over here a butterfly. And I'm like, Mm-hmm. T hula hoop and well, butterfly. Sure, but that's why that's why my list doesn't have the word Z on it. Um, well, I'll well, tell I'm, you I'm, two I'm, things: one on camera, one off camera. <laughs> the first one is you wrong. Yeah, anyway. this one this one surprises me a little bit. I think you know, and I hope I'm, I'm not saying something that's on someone else's list. I can see you going with Dixit maybe because that's got more of kind of like a a calm and serene look on the cards. Um, but even that, I don't know. Actually, Words are stressful, like, man. Words are put, stressful, you know? I didn't put Dixit on my list because in Dixit, I'm always sitting there hoping someone picks my card. I'm like, come on, come yeah. on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So I don't know if that, I can say I'm saying, again, for me, just one, I don't care from the beginning to the end of the game. I just hmm. don't care. I'm having a good time, but I don't care. It's an interesting pick. I wouldn't have thought <laughs> of it. <laughs> Move us on, Roy. <laughs> Number nine. All right. So after that chill first opening uh, gambit, we're going to go with number nine. And um, this game was the first one that got uh, Prospero Hall in my kind of uh, mindset. And it's a game that had no business being any good at all. And it turned out to be a really nice little light game. This is Bob Ross, The Art of Chill. I mean, it's right there in the title. Come on. Hey, look, how is this boo? This game is all, that's literally what this game is about, is about relaxing and painting happy little trees. It's a great choice. Because it's actually a good game, too. That's the other thing, is that this game, again, one of the things that Prospero Hall has become known for is taking IPs that before, 10 years ago, would have been disposable trash and actually turning them into legitimate, yeah, viable Bob, games. Bob, and this was... Disposable trash. You, well, I believe, no, this is... I this Mike is like, just called Bob Ross disposable trash. No, no, I'm saying 10 years ago, if someone if someone tried to make a Bob Ross game, it would have been disposable trash. This is not. This is actually a really good kind of riff on Ticket to Ride, you know, you know, collecting to, to paint these pictures. And, um, you know, obviously they, they lean into this relax, chill out thing. But the game really does evoke that. I mean, it's really breezy and you're just collecting paints to paint these lovely pictures and you've got all the pictures in front of you. It's great. I mean, yeah. Is it a little bit on the nose? Perhaps, but (laughs) it's a pretty little nose. Do you think Ticket to Ride is relaxing, Mike? Um, No, not really. Because Ticket to Ride, you've got the potential of blocking, especially depending on the map. You're like worried that someone's going to block you. Yeah, Bob Ross, Art of Chill, has him stalking you down while you're collecting <laughs> stuff. He's like, I paint faster than you. And he's like, oh, you just collected that four screen? I had that two months ago. You know, and it's so it's like he moves that tracker along. I don't think that game is relaxing. I always feel like I'm about to run out of time. Oh, if I see Bob oh, Ross no. jump up on me in a dark alley, <laughs> I'm going to take a paint palette, slap him out the face with it. No, no, I'm you're, you're misinterpreting. Bob Ross Bob. Estate. I You've been inside a long time, Z, huh? <laughs> Bob is just carefully coaxing you along. He's not. He, I, think, he, I think you've got him all wrong. Come on. I in. think Bob Ross is fine. I don't think it's overrated trash, like Mike said, and I don't think he's coming to kill me, like Z said, or I'm going to hit him in the face. I'm I getting misinterpreted. Feel to the to the estate of Bob Ross. I'm on your I'm on your team. I think highly wow. of you. Wow. I feel so misunderstood. All right, well, that's my number nine, even though it's been vastly misinterpreted. Bob Ross, The Art of Chew. All right, well, my number nine is Bob Ross, Happy Little Trees. <laughs> no, um, my number nine is Kanagawa. Kanagawa, you are collecting. It's kind of a similar theme, actually. You are mm-hmm. collecting paintings. Uh, parts of a panorama, panoramic painting, mm-hmm. or the skills to paint that panoramic painting. You're drafting these and then laying them out in front of you, trying to make, like I said, this long panoramic uh, image. Um, 
it's sort of one of the I don't find the drafting in it very stressful. I think people maybe, you know, could argue that, yeah, no, but you got to, like, you know, know when to strike. There's not a lot. There's only, like, literally three options, to, like, three times you draft or three right. possibilities. So you flip over a card, you're like, no, I don't want it. Flip over another one. Mm, no. And then you get the third one, and then you take them. That's it. Yeah. And then what you do with those is sort of simple. It's kind of like, oh, no, I'm going to be able to paint this next time. So I'll do that. I'm not going to paint this now. I'll make mm -hmm. it my ability to paint later. Right. Or, oh, look, I got another, uh, you know, butterfly. And now I can paint that and I have three butterflies. I take a little tile. Everything is sort of relaxed in it i find it pretty straightforward there are there's quite a few uh, scoring parameters but i find the game mm -hmm. sort of bounds along at a nice clip or it, it never bogs down into me worrying about any one outcome i guess yeah um that's why i find it relaxing i don't know that is choice. my uh, number nine kanagawa what do you guys think tom yeah. Yeah. Nothing? i like it but it, it actually i find a little bit of stress flipping those tiles but I mean, it's fun. Mm. You guys are being so. Wild, I think the big man. thing, the the big, big thing is like you said, Z, is that even if you get something kind of drafted out from underneath you, you always can do something with those cards. None of those cards are useless. They're either going into your panorama or they're going into your school. So one of the worst things that can happen to you is you get stuck with something that you literally can't use, and that never happens in that game. So I think that's what kind of tilts it. And a bunch of those cards are face down anyway, so it's not like, right. oh, I can't let so-and-so get it. You don't know if you're going to really need that. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right, Tom, what do you got? Uh, my number nine is, again, this is a very personal list to me, but this is that the kind of game. That just means it's a bad pick. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying shut up, Z, ahead of time. No, my number nine <laughs> is the very classic game, Hearts. There's a lot of trick-taking games, and a lot of times they can cause me stress, and I love them. But hearts, I just go on autopilot. I could just sit there and play hand after hand after hand of it mm. and not care. I mean, right. yeah, there's the, maybe the shooting the moon, but that never happens anyway. So just right. the, I throw cards out. Okay, you broke cards. We got points. Not a big deal. Now, I could have put a lot of trick-taking games in here, although some of them I find extremely stressful. Right. Some, yeah. some, some trick-taking games. And also some opponents can make any trick-taking game seem stressful. But for the most part, hearts, I just find it a very relaxing and not care. Yeah, a lot of these kind of traditional card games like Euchre or whatever, as long as mm -hmm. you know what you're doing and nobody's being a jerk like you said around the table, yeah, they just sort of they just sort of move along, don't they? Like mm -hmm. you well, barely are aware, if we had done... barely aware there's a game going on while people are chatting. Right. You know, it's like cards are dealt, cards are played, and cards are dealt again, and cards are played, and you just sort of you're barely paying attention to it, like moments you do, and then you go back to just chatting. I, I agree mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. I think that if, if we had done a survey of just, like, random people walking down the street and say, what's the most relaxing game? I wouldn't be surprised if dominoes showed up. Right. Yeah. Because I, I, I you, what you just said, I see people do all the time. So bring out a set of dominoes, Mexican train, or whatever they're playing, and they're just playing. And sometimes there's yelling, but for the most part, you play them, you set them up, you're done. Yeah, like, there's as much at the very least as much laughing as there is yelling usually. Right, right. Yeah, I hadn't considered that kind of traditional card route, uh, card game route, but I I can totally see that. There's that whole, like you said, you're almost on autopilot, and it yeah. it's got a nostalgia, and a, yeah, it's a good choice. I like it. Hearts. So that's my Easy. number nine. Hearts. What you got for us? All right. So my number eight is another newish game. Um, and this is uh, from a kind of small company called Sashi and Sashi that I know Z is also a fan of. And this is a game where you are trying to recall a shared trip that you all took. It's called Remember Our Trip. And the idea is that I don't remember you've it. got this kind of city grid and you've got your own little player board and i just love i think the theme is what really puts this in in, in a relaxing place for me is this idea of like you know were we was that was that a park over there no no i think that was a monument and you know just the whole idea of this i think is is clever and cute 
and sweet. Um, and to me, there's just nothing about it that uh, would make you feel ultra competitive. I mean, yes, technically you can kind of pick a first spot and score more than somebody else, but everybody's scoring. Almost everything you do gives you something to score. Um, it, it's, it, it feeds into this idea of community because you're all doing something together, but it's not a, co- a cooperative game. And so I just yeah. like this feeling of, hey, we're all sitting around the table. We're all remembering the shared trip that we all took and obviously was something that meant something to us because we're talking about it. And uh, to me, that just kind of creates this relaxing vibe and um, just a really cool theme and a neat game on top of it. So remember our trip. Yeah, there's two things about that game. The, the first being that 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 theme is about the least competitive theme right. I can think of for yeah. a competitive game. Like, I'm trying right. to score more points than you. How? By remembering our lovely trip together <laughs> right. more clearly. You know, it's like, yeah. wow. Yeah. And the <laughs> other thing is that Sashi and Sashi also happen to have some of the most relaxing yes. hard work. Mm-hmm. And, and, and from any company, really, I know right. other games look alike because they're from the same artist. Um, that look is so disarming. It's incredibly cute. It's cutesy and yes. silly and like, like artistically accomplished, but not intimidating. You know what right. I mean? It's the kind of art you look mm-hmm. and you go, this is pretty. I could I could maybe do this. <laughs> I, I could maybe can't. do it. You know what I mean? But it's like yeah, if yeah. I look at an right. FFG game, like Fantasy Flight games, right. I look at it and I go, wow, it's really well done. Oof. That, uh, it's like yeah. slightly intimidating because it's so good. The lighting is right. so good. The Sashi and Sashi games, you're just like, oh, that's cute. I could, I could do mm-hmm. that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check this yeah. out. Um, I like that about it. I, that's a great pick, mm-hmm. man. Yeah, that's a good Thank one. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, my number eight is a game uh, that most people don't really remember a lot, maybe, or, or talk about anyway. It's a game called Origin. Uh, mm. that came out. Oh I don't know, wow. Uh, uh, six or eight years ago or something. And this game is about uh, the origin of the uh, human species, basically. You begin mm, with a eh, blank ish. board. Uh, it's it's abstracted-ish, yeah. Uh, you know, it begins with a blank board, the continents, different areas. You put out a character and then um, a nice wooden totem-esque looking piece. I know and what you're game gonna, you're talking yeah, about Yeah, you're going to populate. Okay. You populate the board and score little mm-hmm. things, you know... Um, gather cards and use them to give you better tools you know yeah, more abilities yeah. score different things it's a it's a neat game it's um again competitive but it has it, it doesn't feel like the the strokes of the brush are too broad to feel like you're getting picked on because it's like i'm gonna remove your character and put mine there that represents like 500 years Mm -hmm. a single move you know what i mean yeah so it feels less mean than like i stab you in the back in real time when you step (laughs) out of this phone booth you know what i mean it just doesn't matter as much like this civilization wilts all right Mm -hmm. yeah they're not like mine you know what i mean yeah um so i like that about it i like the the palette of colors is really pleasant there's mm-hmm. even, like, included in the box, they give you, like, an Origin Junior version if you wanted to do that with kids. You just remove the cards. Um, I enjoy it. It's not one I play a lot, but it is one that I, I like having. And every now and then I do sort of just enjoy even just looking at it. It's a very relaxing game. Yeah. It's pretty. It's interesting. It's hmm. engaging. It deserves a little more love than it than it gets or got, you know, when it came out. So there you go. It's my number eight, Origin. <laughs> Yeah, I like it. I just find it super abstract. That's, it that's is. All. It is. Um, the the yeah, the stuff kind of on the board definitely is. I like the cards though. They they feel nicely thematic to a degree. It's a great aesthetic. I haven't played it yet, but but I would definitely play it. It's cool. Yeah. Hmm. I'm finding several modern games to be fairly relaxing. In fact, I almost put Fairy Trails on the list um, that just missed uh-huh. out. That came out uh, recently. This one is not out fully yet although it's it's aeg's big release this summer no 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 no. it was at it's we've been playing it for a while now yeah at santa monica Mm -hmm. so it was at dice hour west the only reason it's not out right now is because of you know everything being delayed okay Um, okay but santa monica i don't know what it is in this game you're drafting cards from the middle and i and and drafting i find to be a fairly relaxing 
it depends on it depends on the kind of drafting it is, right? Like if sure. it's if there's a lot of hate drafting involved, yes. But in this one, there's just eight cards out in the middle. You pick one of them, and then it's replaced. And you're slowly building up your peer in front of you, scoring points in various ways. And you're trying to put the cards together the best possible way you can. But there's not really a lot of interaction. I'm not trying to screw over the other players. And you're watching your peer build up with really good artwork. It's just very mellow and relaxing, I found it to be. Yeah. I just really enjoyed it as the game went by. Uh, it was a lot of fun for me. So yeah. at uh, Santa Monica, it's also really pretty. And like you said, that artwork yeah. can really have a lot to do with the game being relaxing. Because, you know, you mentioned yes. Fantasy Flight, and I don't have a single Fantasy Flight game on this list. <laughs> because yeah, yeah, no, like their, their, art, their artwork is, uh, again, technically extremely accomplished. Mm-hmm. But it's not, I keep coming back to that word, disarming. You know, it's, yeah. it, it makes you aware you're playing something or looking at something that someone sweat over. It's real specific and technical and heavy and dense right you know you look at these other cutesy games and i'm sure just as much work goes into them sure but they look approachable they make you feel at ease um yeah that's a Santa monica game it's one i definitely want to check out i mm-hmm. i i don't want it to slip through the cracks for me right because it i think good. i think you would like it and it, it also mm-hmm. scales really well and I, again it's just yeah there's you could be like, oh, I didn't manage to get these extra points by moving these people here. But at the end of the day, it's just so chill. Yeah. So yeah. chill. So I love yeah. the way it looks. That's another one I want to play. And, and uh, another game by the same designer, uh, Cat Lady, made my short list. It didn't get on my list. But uh, that designer seems to kind of put out these li- these breezy games. So I'm really agree, looking forward but to it. Cat Lady, sometimes I'm getting stressed out because I need some, some, right. some milk. And it hasn't shown yep. up in the <laughs> middle yet. Right. Uh, I didn't make my list, but it was close. All right, we are at number seven. Yes, number seven. Okay. Number seven. Uh, so number seven is a th- well. I'm kind of with you, Tom. I'm, I'm more recent games than old games. Uh, this is a relatively recent game. Uh, this is a game where you are visiting national parks. This is Parks um, from Keymaster Games, and this is another one where the aesthetic certainly helps uh, quite a bit. But also the mechanics of the game are such that. Really, the only negative interaction you could have is taking a spot and potentially blocking another player from that spot. However, they do have a way to kind of mitigate that. You've got a campfire token where you can flip that over and you could still visit a spot. So, you know, sure, you may get blocked out of a spot once per round. But for the most part, it's another one of those games where every place you go, you're getting something. You get positive reinforcement every place you go. Mm. And the whole point of the game is you're just taking a visit. You're trying to get to as many of these beautiful, gorgeously rendered national parks as you can. Um, you, you never really feel like, I never feel stressed at all. I'm just like, oh yeah, I'd like to go there. If I can't go there, then I'll go here. And the bottom line is that at the end, I'm going to have this beautiful display of these cards, gorgeous looking cards uh, that represent the parks that I've been to. Also, it's nice if you are a fan of of going to national parks and you've been to any of these before. It's always kind of nice to be like, oh, I've been there. That's really cool. This is one I've always wanted to go to. So it's a relatively quick game. Um, it, It is gorgeous to look at, real breezy to play. You can teach it in, you know, 10 minutes max, probably shorter. Uh, so this is a nice relaxing game for me as well. Parks. I really yeah. this I was gonna play this at my solo marathon and it didn't make it on. I gotta get this one played. Yeah, you, for haven't, sure. play, you haven't played at all, Tom. It's on my desk. I'm gonna take it home. I think I play it with the family. Yeah, I would try it not solo first, to be honest. Yeah. I would just play it multiplayer. Um I thought about this one, Mike, and um I think it might have a little too much turn angst for me. Some la- oh, some later okay. games, some later games in my list are very similar in in that type of like. Yeah. Oh, I hope they don't take my thing. They just yeah. In they just give me less turn angst. You know, um, right? Arcs definitely sitting there going. You know, because there's only what three face up cards that are your, your the what you're trying to achieve. 
for the you're plot. Like, so yeah. I need, so I need this. I need this thing. I need someone to not jump and stand on that spot. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot, there's a little bit of hand wringing going on. A little too mm-hmm. much for me to have made it to, to okay. this list. But but it's you're, you're right about it being gorgeous. Um, my number seven is a drafting game. Tom's last pick. And uh, a lot of people might disagree with me on this one. Let's see. It's Seven Wonders. Uh, oh. The reason I put it on here is because I f- to be the the rhythm in the game, I find to be relaxing. The idea of give me a hand of cards. They're big, gorgeous, pretty, you know, easy to look at. All I need to worry about is basically a couple of symbols at the top. Grab one. Everybody good. Bloop. Pass that along. I got a bunch of pretty cards. I pick one. I keep mm-hmm. it. And then, yes, I compare with my neighbors and all that stuff. So, But I never found that to be problematic. That's just sort of I'm either doing well at war or I'm not. If I'm not, I'm doing other stuff that I'm doing mm-hmm. well. Again, the like you said, the Mike, the, the positive reinforcement is there. Every time mm-hmm. I keep a card, it's a good card. It's good for something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh or I might get rid of it and make some money. Or I might build my wonder of the world, you know? So right. I think it's ultimately, though, the cadence of the game. That, like, grab a card, pick a card. You know, keep it. Pass mm-hmm. it. Grab a card. Play it out. It's that cadence that makes it feel, ah, for me. Hmm. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about that one. I can relate to the idea of there being a real rhythm to the game. Science is a little uh, stressed. That's probably... Oh. Yeah, I, I didn't mean Tom? to step over you there, Tom. Sorry, go ahead. No, I stepped on you. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, oh Matthew I was just Jeff. saying... <laughs> I was just saying that I really can relate to this idea of having a rhythm because that's probably my favorite element of the game is that it really is a smooth, rhythmic game where where you just kind of feel like you're being swept along. And so I can see that. I hadn't considered this at all, but now that you say it, really, the only angst might be what I, I think uh, I, I kind of heard Tom saying, which is maybe going for the science or potentially the military. Uh, that would probably be what kept it out of the top 10, but I don't think it's a bad pick at all. Well, okay. the science is real stressful for me at the end. I don't care about the military. Mm-hmm. Right. The military is just points at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, yeah. but the science... There's that stress of, Tom, you need to draft that card so Z can't get it. I'm like, well, Mike, you should have drafted it on your turn, you jerk. You know, right. instead of making me put me through all that. And that's the only, I mean, it's not a ton of stress. Don't get me wrong. I guess it's but the same thing as the military, though, right? Isn't it the same thing? You, like, oh, you uh, take I've never this. seen someone say, man, if I hadn't stopped you from getting military, you wouldn't have won. But I definitely have seen people go, well, that person won straight up because of science. To the point gotcha. where when we teach new people, we're like, don't let someone get all the science. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only strategy I give somebody. I'm like, don't let someone get yeah. all the science. Other than yeah. that, do what you want. Mm-hmm. Okay. See, I think Seven Wonders Duel is extremely stressful. It is. I think Duel sure. is not at all, you know, because it's like, if I take this card, I reveal the next one and give you a mm-hmm. shot at it before I get one. There's mm-hmm. two ways to have an instant loss happen, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Much more stressful. But Seven Wonders, the original, I kind of find... Thing, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so we're all we're all chill here, right? Because yeah, <laughs> there might be some disagreement. Again, personal <laughs> list. This is a Stonemeyer game for my number seven. Wow. Okay. I think it is. Uh, um, from Stonemeyer, it's not Viticulture. It's neither of those. Mm. Okay, hold up. Between two you cities. You find scythe relaxing. Yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> no, actually, it's Charterstone. Now, really? let me hold on, because wow. Charterstone is a legacy game. We played le- a lot of legacy games. And if I said, Z, what are the high and low parts of Charterstone? He would probably say he doesn't remember. Other than the, <laughs> this, this, that one stupid thing that they put the, in there. I remember the low. <laughs> 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 no, I really, I really like Charterstone, but I have to say... The whole campaign for me was just so chill. It's like, oh, you open this up. You get, I mean, in the, the game, you're consistently getting new buildings, getting new yeah. cards. And, oh, this card, I get to name this character. Oh, I lost him. I'll get him back in another game. You know, and it just, it's, it's this constant flow. Now, that was somewhat to Charter Jones jet detriment. There's no point right. in that game that, like, Pandemic Legacy or even Clank Legacy, you're like, what? But mm-hmm. because of that, I enjoyed it, too. It was just a nice, easygoing thing for the entire campaign. 
Mm. And I don't know. I just uh, the artwork again. Again, I keep coming back to artwork. Sure. I've not heard it. The storyline was inoffensive. I'm currently playing through um, Rise of Queen's Tale with my kids. Right. So we're mm. four games into that. And that's also easy going, but the gameplay is not. The gameplay is getting a little mean as we're going on now. Mm -hmm. And also the story is super boring. Charter Stone, at yeah. least the story was slightly interesting. Right. Um, so I, did, yeah. I just thought it was going to be a relaxing campaign game. Hmm. I don't you know, disagree with you, actually. I think yeah. it's a good thing. I honestly, yeah, I'm I'm kind of wondering why I didn't put this in my consideration because if I had, Stressed I think this may have made my short list. <laughs> no, I think it would have made my short list. I don't think it would have made my top ten, but I totally see what you're getting at. This was the least stressful legacy style game I've ever played. Yeah, um, yeah it's a good choice. It's a good pick. Yeah, I think for somebody who wants to try legacy games but they're not confrontational or they don't yeah. like the stress of gaming, not to say this is co-op. Um, mm -hmm. so maybe that's not a good parameter. If you're non-confrontational, pick a co-op, but if you want to play something that's not cooperative, but you don't want that stress, definitely. Yeah. This is the one that, the, what else even is there? If you want something that's low stress and a legacy game. Yeah. So I guess, you know, but yeah, maybe near maybe. and far, maybe that's, that's not a legacy though. Yeah. That's really a campaign. Yeah. Right. Right. Number six. All right. Well, I'm chill, even though I, you know, got a dig from Tom for being a Stonemeyer fanboy, which is ridiculous. I keep having to like bat these charges down left and right. So my number six is a game about making wine. Um, <laughs> it really is. Actually, to me, I think this is probably my most, if there's a controversial pick on my list, it's uh, Viticulture, uh, because th any worker placement game can inherently cause some angst. But to me, this game, especially, you know, which I always count the essential edition at when I'm talking about Viticulture, I'm talking about the essential edition. So you've got the Grande Worker, which really removes a lot of that potential angst. Um, if you play with the Tuscany board, it adds a little bit more, but I'm just talking base essential viticulture. To me, it's a it's still, as far as a worker placement goes, a light, breezy game with a theme that kind of just puts you in this pastoral, you know, we're just picking grapes off the vine and we're making some wine and we're fulfilling orders. And yeah, sometimes someone's going to take a spot that you wanted. Yeah. You may sometimes get a, a card that's not exactly what you need. And you, you may feel a little bit of concern over, well, I don't really have the right type of cards for the type of grapes I have, but I don't know. That game just never puts me in a stressful frame of mind. And I think it's because of what you're doing. It's a very thematic feeling game to me where I really do kind of feel like, it makes you feel like you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And that's just really relaxing to me. Uh, even though I'm not a winemaker, um, I feel like that would be a very relaxing vocation, you know, being out in nature, picking grapes, crushing them. You know, I still picture Some the winemakers going to come and slap you and be like, it's the hardest <laughs> job I've ever had. <laughs> that's probably, probably true. It's probably, probably a very, very difficult job. But yeah, no, I know this is maybe a little bit of a controversial choice, but uh, this one does always relax me I, I really like playing viticulture and, and are you uh, sure so that's my are you sure it's not the wine you're drinking while you're playing the game <laughs> that is relaxing well look let's not get caught up in all these details z i mean let's just you know it, 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 that may help i don't know i i'm assuming you don't might, agree no maybe maybe i could see myself agreeing with this if i'm not the one running the game how about that Hmm, like if okay. I can hand the reins off and really not worry, and if I have a question, someone there has all the answers without needing to oh, look anything okay. up, and I can just play, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Then yeah. Maybe. Um, because I do think there's a lot going on, you know, mm. it, and so I don't normally find the game relaxing because... There is a lot going on. There's a lot of, like, fiddling with stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that maybe sounds like nitpicking because all games are oh. about moving things around. But uh, maybe, again, if somebody else is taking doing the sort of brunt of the work and I can just be like, so this lets me play a blue card? Great blue <laughs> card. Yeah. All right. right, right. Hey, 
I do what? Age the grave? So just bump them up. Okay, yeah, b- bump them. You know, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. But again, That's it's fair. a personal list, you know? Sure. All right. Uh, my number six is game that, I mean, of, of all the games, you know, before all these sort of gamer games or hobby games we talk about now, as long as you take the stakes away from the game, right? As long as there's no money on the line, which makes every game stressful. But of all, <laughs> like, classic games, the one that is probably the least stressful is the one in which you're doing basically nothing, and that is bingo. Oh, you wow. sit there, somebody calls a number, and you go... <laughs> Wait, is bingo on your list? <laughs> no, but Rise of Augustus. Oh, oh okay. I actually considered Rise of Augustus, too. Rise of Augustus is a really good pick for this because again, yeah. very little fiddling around. It's it's almost the exact opposite of uh, you know um, <laughs> viticulture when it comes to that. You're ba- sure, you're basically sure. moving almost nothing. Somebody mm-hmm. whoever has the bag calls out a thing and you go, oh, I have it. I put a little work, a little guy just covering the space. You know, it's bingo yeah. until you finally yeah. make one of the cars. And then you go, got it. You can you bank that one. You take a Wait, new one. You go what? You go you you don't go got it, Z. What game are you playing? You go bingo. <laughs> and you put it. What, what are you, you, are you supposed, supposed to say? I don't know. I think you're supposed to say Ave Caesar or something like that. Um uh, really? I don't know. Who cares? This is why um, the game's not on your relaxing list, Mike. That's you're right. You're supposed to scream stuff. You, um, yes. So yeah, I do find Rise bingo. of Augustus really pretty relaxing it's it's yeah. low it's just sort of low involvement you know there might be a little turn angst like i said where you're sort of waiting for the final thing to get called so you can yeah. bank something as long as you're not that worried about winning it's a really relaxing game i think so yeah I my agree. number my number six rise of augustus that was 100 good choice my short list. i really like it i thought you were putting bingo on i actually find bingo more <laughs> stressful because it's no one money. ever plays bingo for no stakes, right? Right, 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 right. That's what I meant, yeah. All right, my number, uh, bu- 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 bu, where are we at? Number six, six. is my other party mm-hmm. game, and that is wow. Concept. Concept mm. is just real chill for me. It's 20 questions, and there's some convoluted, weird scoring in there that I'd have yet to ever see anybody use. Mm-hmm. Um, you just play, and people guess. You uh, put out the things. I just played this in my live solo marathon. And I played it at in the middle of the night. I was walking in my sleep. Um, I uh, believe we started at one and went to two. Um, and I wasn't really that tired at all. We just went. The time went by pretty quickly. Everyone was it was it was a great game to play in the middle of the night. And I've done this many times. And every time I play it, people have a good time. It's very similar, yeah. honestly, to me saying just one. I just don't care. We just put out the thing. And people guess they don't know it. Whatever. Put out another one. I will argue, Tom, that both of those games you've picked, you are not playing by the rules. Sure, but I also mentioned well, it an in interesting my top point. ten list, so I'm okay with that. That it's a what? I, mean, I, I also mentioned that. This isn't a written list. Written list? It's not a written list, so I'm not saying just concept. I'm saying concept, but also I ignore the scoring that's in concept. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I also no, mentioned no. that everyone else on Earth, I think, also <laughs> ignores that scoring. I've Probably never seen it happen. For, for Connor, yeah, yeah. most likely. I've, I've tried one, played I know with some it. people play that with a certain number of cards, but most of the time when I see just one being played, people just keep playing it. They just don't stop. Right. Um, yeah. I guess you can make those games relaxing. That's what I mean. Like when I play those, either one of those two by the rules, yeah, I don't find them relaxing. I guess you can just say, like, ignore that, guys. Let's just mess around. Yeah. So you're concept. wrong. That's what I'm saying. You're you're yeah, wrong. No, it's an interesting choice, Tom. It's an interesting choice you made. Shut up, Roy. Go now. Go on. <laughs> Number five. All right, the top half of the list. This is the first crossover, I believe. Crossover, yeah. Um, this is uh, a game about painting a lovely landscape. This is Kanagawa. Oh, um, so yeah, I won't uh, I won't belabor it because you brought up pretty much every reason why it's on my list even higher. Um, 
you know, obviously the art is gorgeous and the, the theme feeds into this kind of relaxing, but it really is the thing you mentioned, which is that every single card you get is going to do something for you and, and you uh, not to belabor that. the point. Sure. Oh, well, sure. But it's, yeah. Uh, so, right. Yeah. My, my intelligence, let me, let me double down on my own intelligence here, but no, I just like that feeling that every card you get is going to do something for you. That kind of reduces anxiety in a drafting game. And so uh, I just, I, I really, really enjoy Kanagawa. Plus well, so every time I play, I'm drinking wine. So that helps. <laughs> uh, are you going to say that for every game on the list? <laughs> Only the top five. <laughs> All right, what's your five, Z? My number five is um, the more relaxing, lower stakes version of Lost Cities. This is Celtic, the Lost Cities board game. Oh, uh, interesting. Which led to now not just go up, but you can go down also. Oh, you mm. know, when you draw a hand in Lost <laughs> Cities and you have the eight and the nine and the ten, you're like, oh, no. <laughs> it's like the worst <laughs> thing, right? Because you yeah. know your opponent is going to sit there and waiting for you to have to discard those. Yeah, at that point, like, you're immediately playing with a five-card hand. Celtis, who cares? I start from the ten, yeah. and I work my way the other way. I go the other right. way. Right. There's there's um, no question one's more stressful than the other, for, for sure. sure. And it's just... Like you play a car every turn, it's like that again. We're talking about cadence and that rhythm of a game is that idea of like play a card, move a little tracker, and draw a card. And play, boop, draw, play, boop, draw. And that's just sort of easy going. I find that to be the same thing as Tom said in Hearts. It's that feeling of familiarity, not with rules, mm -hmm. but with like almost like a mechanical response to what you're doing physically, you know? It's not like mm -hmm. looking mm -hmm. for, okay, I'm going to place a worker in one of these 12 spaces. There's no mechanical response to that. You have to make up your mind every single time. Uh, but knowing that, like, when your turn comes around, you fan the cards and you pick one and draw one, I don't know. I find that repetition to be kind of soothing. Countess does some of that. It's Pretty, I'm talking specifically about Celtis here, by the way. I know that Lost Cities, the card game, is the same thing, but I don't find it as appealing uh, colors-wise. It's just, it's sort of garish and, and This not year they're going to be announcing Lost City, the board game, based on the card game, which was based on Celtis, which was based on the card game. I, and then there's a movie. Oh. Celtis. Nice. The Lost City. I, just when you thought it was safe. It's a polyomino game which some people might find some of them stressful and some of them not. Um, I guess you could argue that some are easier to play than others. And so I thought about this because I wanted to put one on the list because as a whole, I find these to be fairly relaxing. I can usually fit everything in. Not like Blokus sure. where it's really hard. Okay. And this one is, the one I picked was Baron Park. Mm -hmm. I like Baron Park. And at the end of the day, I'm going to get my stuff done. Now you yeah. might get it done a little bit faster than me and that will make you win. And there's definitely a game there. But for, I don't know, I just feel pretty chill about it. You're usually not going to take everything that I want in the game as you build up your Baron Park. The theme helps a lot. It's a stronger theme than yep. most of the Polyomino games. Right. And I have not played it with the expansion. I heard the expansion add stuff, so I'm not sure what that does. But the base game itself, I find to be fairly relaxing. And mm -hmm. it's also satisfying. Like, you're not going to play Baron Park and get massacred. I don't think. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe it's possible. Right. But I'm going to get a lot of my park done. You might win, but I can still feel very satisfied with what I've done. And at the end of the day, I just had a good time. So Yeah, can't argue with that. I agree with that. I, mm -hmm. I no longer have that game, but I remember every time I play it, it, it does sort of, you settle into it. I actually it. thought this You're might like, be on Z's list. Um, mm. but, um, I didn't think of it. It could be my, yeah, it could be somewhere between 11 and 15. Yeah. I can All see right. that. Solid That's choice. A it's one. a solid choice. Sure. Yeah. All righty. Cool. Listen. Number four. Mike, every <laughs> time, man, you just, I don't know what it is. He makes it sound condescending. Yeah. It's like I'm so misunderstood. Choice, I guess. Look, it's just because I'm super chill today. I think it's what it is. You're you're just mis misinterpreting my chillness for condescension. But I'm just chill. 
Look at wow, Tom's getting real chill right now. What's going on, man? Right now, Tom? Let's put it, put it back. Oh, it's a whole new world here. All right. It's a relaxing list. Um, <laughs> you definitely don't want me to unbutton my shirt because I don't have anything yes, else going on I right have here. To. So, <laughs> my number four is a light, breezy little card game, and you talked about you know remember our trip being one of the most non-competitive themes for a competitive game, I would argue that getting the best herbs for your own herb garden would be up there too. So I chose Herbaceous for my number four. This is just a gorgeous little card game, very quick, very light, very breezy, where you've got kind of this common pool and you are trying to draft these herbs and it's a set collection game and it's over before you know it. You can play two, three games of this back to back to back. And it's one of those games where quite honestly, someone's going to win, but it's really not about that. It's really just about trying to do the best you can so, you know, trying to do the best to get the, the herbs that you hear for. And if you win, that's great. If you don't win, it's okay. Someone else did a little bit better than you, but you all have these beautiful cards in front of you and you made the best of what you could. Very, very light and breezy. Um, I, I don't see how you could play this game and be stressed. I mean, it just seems like it would be almost impossible. Right. So uh, I think this is a really good choice. If you're just looking to... to Spend 15, 20 minutes around a table with some people doing something pleasant with some beautiful art. Okay. I can see now that uh, if I want to get uh, Mike a, a relaxing activity, pretty much, it's uh, drinking or cooking or brewing or, you know, <laughs> that's that's basically it. Now I know. Well, I'm, I'm learning so much about you, I Mike. I don't care if you relax as long you as you don't relax and drive. Drinking. No, no, no. You love drinking. You love cooking. You love brewing. <laughs> You love being condescending. There's four <laughs> new things I know about you today that I'm very happy that I, I now have learned. Um, this has been an illuminating list for sure. It's illuminating, yeah. All right, my number four, <laughs> my number four, I figure is going to be on somebody's list because it's the um, it's the cliche relaxing game, mm -hmm. and it's become kind of the cliche relaxing game because it's pretty relaxing, and that's Tokaido. Um, Tokaido is that game where you are going on a trip across, you know, uh, Japan and every little stop you make along the way, you get some little bonus. Everything's mm -hmm. worth about two or three points. It's yep. all the same. You know what I mean? At the end of the game, the game's <laughs> a little flat because it's all sort of the same, but mm -hmm. it is relaxing because you're mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm going to go to the hot springs. I'm going to go shopping and you draw a few little cards that are really pretty and you buy one for a, a few, you know, a few um, bucks. And then you go to the inn and you buy some delicious looking food and then you start on your little trip again. You can't stop where somebody else is, but it probably doesn't matter because you're just sort of getting two or three points for everything you do anyway mm -hmm. along the way. It's pretty relaxed. It's very pretty. Yes. Yeah. Very gentle. The game feels gentle. Uh, it feels like it's designed almost to sort of lull you into a sense of relaxation, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And I think it works. I think it works for that. So, yeah, my number uh, four is Takaido. Well, this is a heads up. This is not on my list. Not because I don't think it's relaxing. I think it is. I just don't like it as much as everybody else. I find it mm. decent for me. Uh, yeah, I guess I agree with that. I think it's decent. I... Mm -hmm. I think some of these, I, I ultimately kind of ranked them based on how relaxing. I mean. So your number one's taking a nap? <laughs> there was a game in which you took a nap. <laughs> that would I'm be great. There's not, actually. Siesta that time. Would. Yeah. No, yeah. this is, yeah. this this is a good like choice. And, and... No siesta. <laughs> Yeah, I did. That's how I did it. I ranked it on how, not how good of a game it is, but how relaxing I feel it is. So, yeah, I, I, I think Tokaido is a solid choice for sure. <laughs> yeah, not, don't get me wrong. I think these are all these are all games I like, but that's not mm -hmm. my my pri primary Correct. sort of ranking algorithm, wasn't it? Correct. Right, my number four sounds very similar to first few letters anyway, um, and that is Takinoko. Oh, um, okay. The game of the panda eating. Uh, bamboo and the gardener chasing him away and everyone is matching patterns or trying to get a certain number of bamboo that they ate or 
uh, building up these bamboo shoots to certain heights. And yes, there's definitely competition back and forth, but it just feels light and fluffy. And part of that, again, the, the cute, very, the chibi panda theming that comes in with this. And I don't know. I just feel real chill when I play this. This is my gateway game. If I'm going to play a game with someone who I think gets mad easy, um, mm. I'm not playing Ticket to Ride with them because I'm going to block them. I'm not going to play right. Catan with them because I'm going to use the Monopoly card on them. But I might play mm -hmm. Takinoko with them because I think the panda might mitigate their anger. And he sucks it all off into his body <laughs> um, and eats it along with the pink bamboo. Um, mm. I don't know what it is. I know that if we did a poll... Probably more people will pick uh, Tokaido than Takinoko, but I, I like I like Takinoko better. I considered both of them. Mm. This is the one I picked. Right. Yeah, that's a good Sure. Pick. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I, I consider Takinoko. I think it's I do think there's a little more turn angst, but but it's a it's a great choice. I can't I can't that's quibbling. It's a good choice. Huzzah. Number three. Lost my Ooh, headphones. Dude, this is getting more and more uh, interesting at every. This is getting very <laughs> awkward. Extremely awkward. <clears throat> Sorry, I lost my headphones. Yeah, well, you lost more than that. You lost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, my number three is uh, my entry, Tom, into the um, the polyomino game. Uh, you know, Baron Park is a fine choice, but uh, as far as relaxation, I was kind of looking towards the Uve trilogy there and the one that i settled on was indian summer uh to me i think this is the one that is the most relaxing of the three you're basically just placing out those leaves on the forest floor and you're collecting the the the, or the acorns and you've got the squirrels and just like in Barren park for the most part you're going to fill up most of your board um and someone else may end up with more points than you but at the end of the game you're going to look down and you're going to see this gorgeous array of autumn covered leaves colored leaves i should say and it's just a feeling of satisfaction it's a feeling of tranquility um everything there's a satisfaction about slotting those pieces into each other and getting these bonuses almost again it's that positive reinforcement almost everything you do is going to be good for you in one way or another if someone takes a piece that you want so be it although you actually you've got your own kind of thing there so that doesn't even much apply um, I, this is the one I go for. I think you could have also said cottage garden. Not I would have picked cottage yet, but, garden. But, would you? I found that in autumn, there's definitely some, sometimes a fight to get to those certain pieces before someone else. Um, and it is a race hey, hey, by hey. very nature. Sure. Yeah, it's a race, but it doesn't, I don't know. To me, it never feels like a race. It just feels like you're trying to fill up your board in the best possible way. And, and so are you there is an end the game. I mean, do I maybe? Well, I mean, I don't want to be condescending, Z, but uh, no, no, I, I'm, I'm okay. Honestly, I'm okay. I rarely win. Uh, when I play my wife, I never win, but I rarely you win. You don't? Uh, you don't win very often? No. I do not. I'm, I'm not very good at it. Z, the look on your face saying a thousand words, and I'd say at least 999 of them can't be repeated here, but you oh, don't no, no, no. pick it all. If there was a uh, curse word face, that was it. It was? <laughs> um, I didn't mean to for that to be a curse word face. I haven't played either one of the two games oh. you guys are talking about. So that was okay. more like, uh, this is so boring, can we get to my pig kind of face. <clears throat> I mean, we not, to be, faces a lot not, to, be, not yes. to be condescending, you know. Uh, uh -huh. um, we all know there's one good list among these three, and mm. it's well, well it's mine. You yours? It's Your mine, time. you know. Oh yeah, sure. Um, my number three is autumn, winter, <laughs> summer leaves, Indian uh, summer. Um, my number three is silver and gold, baby. Mm. Silver and gold is a flip and write type game in which you are completing little patterns. You are just, you know, flipping a card over. It shows you some sort of, you know, a pattern on there. And you take your little dry erase marker, boop, 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 mark something off. When you finally complete the pattern, you set that one aside. You draft a new one. You just keep going until you... It's just sort of over. It sneaks up on you, actually, a little bit, because the game is very short. Um, and then you see how you did. The scoring in it is very simple. I mean, like the parameters that 
would decide which card you draft when you finally complete one are simple. I don't dislike that in this game. I think in any other game, I'd be like, that you're scoring for? It's so obvious which card mm. I should take next. Um, but in this one, I like I do think it works as kind of a relaxing, chill game. I don't have to think about it that much. Like, hey, look, I scored this cards of this type already. That one gives me bonuses for them. I'll take that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, and you're always you're always making progress. Even when the card gets flipped that you no longer have the ability to put that pattern in, you still get to mark anywhere. So you will, you never like skip a turn. You know, you're always doing something. Once you complete one, that's mm -hmm. it. You just boop, boop, boop. So I do like it. It's probably, I find it to be one of the more relaxing flip and write games out there. There is confrontation there. I mean, you are competing against each other. It doesn't feel as in your face as some of, the, as some of these other games where you're mm -hmm. taking a die from someone, right? Those feel more confrontational, less relaxing. Because you're like, oh, don't take that one. I need that one die. And these three jerks draft before me. Um, this one, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, this Just is, I can't think of a less, um, 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 a less relaxing game than this one, Z. This, I mean, I mean, a more relaxing game. This one is, mm. I, I should have put this on my list. This is a good pick. Excellent. Yeah, it is a good pick. I hadn't considered it at all, actually. It's a good pick. Cool. I'm glad. All right, I said I was. I said I was done picking party games, but this one has the word party in it. Although I don't consider it a party game. And that's Sushi, sushi Go. Go. Well, yeah, I, say, yeah. I mean, I could have just said Sushi Go, but if you're going to get it, you might as well get the party version because there's yes. just more. Yes, so sure. drafting, again, for me, is usually relaxing unless you're hate drafting, which for the most part, that's in very few games. But Sushi Go, you just take stuff. You're trying to get it. I don't think about what the next person wants. I think about what do I want at this point in time. I take it, draft it, draft it, draft it, draft it, done. Next. Score points at the end. I won, didn't win. That was fun. Let's do it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I just, for this one, I think also if you're trying to collect a set of something, it's usually possible. And if it All isn't, right. you're like, oh, bummer, maybe next time. But it's not like I need this card, that card, this one, and that. Now that everything, and it's also so simple that Sushi Go is definitely one of those games I can play and we can talk during the game. Yeah. which for me is one of the marks of a relaxing game. That actually had something to do with all these games is where there can be conversations occurring that aren't game-related. So, It's a good pick. I mean, it's your version of my Seven Wonders pick, right? It's the same right. thing. Right. It's a sure. slider. It's simpler. It definitely allows for more of what you're talking about, so it's a great pick, yeah. Um, right, number three, Sushi Go Party. Party. Mm -hmm. Number two. All right. My number two is um, there's a bit of a theme here. Most of my games food I think, seem to have and kind of, drinking. <laughs> there's no food nor drinking, as far as I'm aware, in this game. Oh, then so, I'm out. Um, You're picking flowers. You're. Uh, it's got pastor. You could you could use the word pastor to describe it. I would. I could use pastoral to describe this game. I, I might actually. This is a game where you are playing. And you're painting landscapes. You're traveling to different areas that have beautiful vistas, and you are painting them. This is a small game that I think has flown under the radar. Uh, it's called Sunset Over Water. Uh, I actually like this game quite a bit, and it it, uh, it really, again, didn't make a big splash, but it's a gorgeous little card game where you are playing, everyone's kind of simultaneously playing a card that has an, a time basically that you're leaving for the day. And so it's kind of that initiative track. The earlier you leave, you know, you, you have some different kind of bonuses and directions that you can travel across this grid of cards that's in the center of the table. But all of these cards are just these beautiful pieces of art. By, I believe it's Beth Sobel that does the art. And... Uh, it's just a really, really relaxing game where every turn you know that you're going somewhere to pick up a beautiful card that's going to give you some type of symbol that you could then use to turn in for a kind of a contract fulfillment where people are basically people are commissioning you to paint these beautiful pieces of artwork for them and you're paying you for that. And so, uh, Again, it's competitive, but it doesn't feel necessarily terribly competitive. Someone's going to win, but it's really more about the experience around the table. And and, and I guess my long-winded way of saying that that's what I think the overlying 
feel that I went for with this list was that, yes, you're competing with other people, but it's more about the shared experience that you're all having at the table, that more than anything else. And so uh, I think Sunset Over Water is a game that, uh, you know, if you like the idea of that, you should check it out because it's a it's a under the radar type of a game. It's interesting. Um, I agree that, I mean, this is now your second uh, pencil first game with Herbaceous being the other one. Um, I think I would have. It is. Re- I think I would have first them myself. I okay. think Herbaceous is a little more relaxing than Sunset hmm. Over Water. Um, that timing thing, the simultaneous selection means that someone could yank out something from under your feet. You know what I mean? In sure, Sunset Over sure. Water, they could do that. In the other game, in Herbaceous, you take turns. You know it's yeah, not yeah. your turn. So something gets right. flipped. You don't have a chance to take it. It's not your turn. Sure. Um, so it's a nice pick. I think I agree. Uh, all those, I mean, that little series of games from Pencil First with the, the Beth Sobel artwork, they're all very, yeah. they got their own vibe, you know? So sure. yeah, it's a good, a good pick. Nice. Um, all right. My number two is a very rummy esque game. Uh, very relaxing, very chill. It's basically a two player game, but some of the printings uh, let you play with more than two. It's a game called Call to Glory, which has come out in quite a few different really? versions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Call to Glory. Uh, Crazy Chicken was Crazy one of them. Chicken. Drive. And then it, it came out as Drive as well, which had illustrations of cars. And Crazy Chicken had illustrations of, you guessed it, Crazy Chickens. Um, <laughs> so Call to Glory has uh, illustrations of historical Japanese figures or, you know, uh, roles in Japanese culture, I suppose. Mm. Uh, but it's the same game. Uh, you know, you are on your turn, you draw two cards, maybe you make a meld, and then you discard one. That's the game. It's it's a rummy variant. And the trick being, if you make a bigger meld than your opponent, you, they throw their meld away, and you keep yours, and you're trying to score the most points. Um, it's very relaxing. It's, again, that muscle memory aspect of draw, draw, play, maybe, but definitely discard. And um, I didn't even consider a, this one. That's a good. It's a good chatting game. You know, you can definitely be chatting about whatever you want while you're playing this with the momentary blip of like, haha, like, oh, OK, discard these. Anyway, what are we talking about? You know what I mean? Hmm. Um, this <laughs> yes. is a good one. It's a really good hmm. one. So I, I just like it. I keep it around not because it's a great game. Honestly, there's a lot of these kinds of card games that are rummy, but um it's got really good artwork. The the printing I have, which is from um, White Goblin, is very pretty. Good artwork, great mm-hmm. quality cards, like some of the best linen finish um, in any cards I've seen. And it's if I ever really want to pull something out that is going to take me two minutes to teach, and mm. it's relaxing with a non game or just anybody, Call to Glory is always there for that. So hmm. my number two pick. I like that choice. I need to play this. Yeah, and it also works really well two players, I think. Me and my wife used to play Drive a lot. That was a simply fun version. Right. Um, yeah, technically actually, Call to Glory plays three and four, but it's it 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 is a two player game. I w- in retrospect, Z, I don't think I like the Call to Glory theme as much as I like collecting the cars. Oh uh, was- yeah, but the card quality from uh, Simply Fun wasn't as good. No, at, that's true. Well, both. they were also selling it for like. Thirteen ninety nine or something. But. Mm. So right, the fact that two, you're having to discard cards doesn't doesn't cause you any angst or anything. Sorry, I didn't. Now, nah, because you know you can take it right back from them. It just this back and forth thing. I don't oh, know. It's oh kinda like my a, gosh! Ha ha ha! Oh no! No you! Ha ha ha! Oh, yeah, okay, it doesn't I feel see. like it doesn't feel like uh, Lost Cities that way. It's okay. not the same kind of stress. Yeah. Okay. All right, my number two Z does not like this game at all, but I. Don't mind playing it. It's so relaxing because I do not care what happens. And you know, and that's a good thing because anything can happen in this game and you could end up having the worst status of a human being ever. Uh, and that's Tales of Arabian Nights because oh, wow. it don't matter. Yeah. You can be crippled, insane, in prison, having a jealous wife slash husband chasing you down after you've uh, switched genders yourself. Um and be under a curse, and it, I don't care. It's like, eh, whatever. All right. 
Yeah. Who cares what happens? It's it's right. insane and it's fun though. But I just I, I guess if you went into it trying to win, this game could be super stressful because mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the wrong way to play this game. I right, sure. right, right, right. Um, and I picked. I thought about picking the choose your own adventures uh, mm-hmm. games, but there I'm also trying to win those. I really, really don't care if I win Tales of Arabian Nights. I just want to see what happens to me. To the right. point where I'll pick the worst option. I'll be like, you meet a young beggar. I'm like, punch them in the face. Come on, let's get something started here. But usually... And sometimes like, sometimes the, out- the outcome of that is really good right, for you, like, right? It was so, actually a right. criminal that you have... <laughs> you're like, oh, I didn't mean for that to happen. Yeah, yeah. Let's I try again. You, punch- if you're... If you what just want to hear relaxing. a crazy story, I think it's the same yeah. thing. It's like near and far... But, you know, yeah. you just want to hear some craziness read out to you. Yeah. When I think relaxing, I think punching a beggar in the face. So this is a solid choice. This is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that's a good thing to do. I know. I know. I'm just. It is relaxing. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to know what I've done in some of those video games when I'm trying to relax. You're like, all right, it's time to relax. I do Let's know. Out... I do Let's know. Let's get out Borderlands and see what we can do. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. My number two, yeah. Tales of Arabian Nights. All right. And finally, number one. Yeah. All right. Looking oh, chill. Looking yeah, chill. Yeah, baby. Woo. That's a sharp-dressed man right that there. That is the sexiest um, Amish man I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, that's like the day the Amish man quit is what that looks like. <laughs> you know? I'm out of here. I'm not he turning it in. He was like, I'm out. I'm, I'm get, uh, Pull out a cell phone and be like, I got to go. <laughs> I don't think you can say that. I must uh, go post-haste. No, but yeah. he gave up. That's the point. It's like, I'm changing Oh, that's right. All right, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so when I heard we were doing this list, I knew immediately what my number one was, and everything else was picking what's two through ten. Yeah. Um, to me, when I hear a relaxing game, one game comes to the front of my mind, and that's Tokaido. Uh, so it's a crossover, uh, Z. And yeah. again, you what you said is correct in that it's not – necessarily the most dynamic game but i honestly feel like you know if i can be so presumptuous and i and i am being presumptuous i feel like the design of the game was to make people relaxed i mean i really feel like that's what whole design aesthetic of that game was was to make people feel like no matter what you do the whole point of this game is to have a pleasant journey right you may get the most points sure. at the end, but at the really what it's about is everybody at the table at the end of the game should feel like they had a pleasant journey. You, We all went on the same trip. We may have stopped at different places. We may have concentrated on different things, but at the end of the game, we all had a good time. We all enjoyed being together, and we can all kind of have the shared journey from one end of Japan to the other. And so to me, that game... Whether it's a dynamic or an exciting game, I'm not sure that's what it was trying to be. I think it was right. trying to be a game that exudes a sense of zen and relaxation among the players. And I think it achieves that 150%. So to me, Tokaido is the most you relaxing game. You can achieve it 100%. Stop adding percentages. That's not a possibility. You cannot Look, give 110% math- to your coach. <laughs> I'm not a mathematical thinker. Um... I agree with you. I I do. You know, what it makes me think of is what it reminds me of is, and now now it's in my mind because this is so hot right now, is those uh, Animal Crossing type games or little farming sims where you what you are doing is very mundane. Right. You know, like you wake up every day like that loop, that feedback loop is fairly mundane. You wake up and water the plants and feed your cow, maybe go to town and buy a turnip. Right. And you go to sleep and you up and you water the plants and you you know milk the cow and then you maybe buy a sheep today you buy it. that's what Tokaido kind of feels like it's that right. are you that playing feedback. Animal Crossing because uh, you no. know a lot about it somebody else might be um <laughs> but I played Stardew <laughs> Valley down. and it's the same thing Stardew Valley is the same thing yeah or, you know uh, Harvest Moon or whatever 
it's that same idea. I think Tokaido feels like that, where you like, I hit the hot spring, three points. You know, I'm gonna mm-hmm. donate to the to the temple, two points right. or three. It's that the the yep. f- is is tiny, is short. You know. Um, all right, my number one. I felt the same way you did, Mike, when we I, I knew what the list was. I had number one, and I just had to come up with another nine. And my number one is something you mentioned already. It's herbaceous. There oh, is, wow. Wow. Okay. It's the one that I immediately, upon playing it first time, did not need to get to the point where I found it to be relaxing. I did not need to, like, think, oh, I could see once I internalize this game and I really mm-hmm. know it well that it could be relaxing. It's just... It's... And it's almost, again, designed to put you right. at ease. And not mm-hmm. to say that there isn't a game there, not to say that you aren't trying to score the most points, but I playing that game makes me think of like visiting visiting grandmas and you know, right. like and collecting right. herbs on a windowsill. It like it puts you at ease, man. It's like mm-hmm. all about the most relaxing, tiny, simple activities that you can think of. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're collecting, like you're pulling sprigs of, you know, of herbs. Right. Like, I, come on, you know? Um, <laughs> but yeah, Herbaceous, I think, is it. And that artwork is from Beth yeah. Sobel. When she's drawing that kind of content, oh. you know, flowers, pastoral things, herbs, uh, Tussy Mussy, mm-hmm. right, that she did that. Right. She's drawing that kind of stuff. The look of it is a like warm blanket artwork. You know what I mean? That's it. <laughs> For sure. That's yeah. what herbaceous is. So that's my mm-hmm. number one. Yeah. Great choice. All righty. Well, my number one is a little bit more off the wall, I guess, for you guys. But for me, it is the most relaxing game I play. I just have a great time. I go on auto when I play it, even if every time I play it, it's different. Okay. And that's Dominion. Oh. For me, I don't. I yes, I know you shuffle many times in Dominion, which I will never complain about ever. Now that I played mm-hmm. that that whatever game is the Nyrim. <laughs> <Nyrim. laughs> um, at least with Dominion, I wait till the deck is out before I reshuffle it. But anyway, um, I get you know I play my cards, do my thing, grab it, shuffle, shuffle, bum bum bum, bye, and I do that every game, and I have a good time. I like the combos. Occasionally, there's a moment where I stop and go, ooh, interesting. But for the most part. I, I play it on auto, and yet I still really like it. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, you can argue that games like Clank and other games have done these neat things where you're also moving through a dungeon. And I know that you've cooled on Dominion yourself, Z, for that very reason. That Dominion is very much, it's it's the deck building, that's it. I just mm-hmm. don't care. I just, every time I play it, I have a good time, and I just really, I'm just real chill at it. So. Yeah, I could, again, get into that, that rhythm of, shuffle you know play play shuffle shuffle yeah i I get it especially if you know the game well you know y'all none none of the cards you're playing with are like new to you you know learn anything Mm -hmm. you can glance at it and you know what you know village yeah but i guess even more specifically if i'm playing with people who know the game and even if there are cards that are new we take our time before the game we read through the cards once you start playing you remember what all the cards do there's 10 of them sure Right. right Yeah, it seems like if I, if I understand what your list, Tom, you a lot of your games kind of allow you to have a muscle memory. Like you're able to kind yes. of turn off your brain a little bit and you're just playing. You're in the flow. You're in the rhythm of the game. And that's what relaxes you. You know, you still are, are trying to do something. You're trying to accomplish something, but you're not having to focus so much of your energy on the, 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 the strategy. You're just in rhythm and flow. It's an interesting way to think about this list. And I mean, interesting relaxing in a relaxing real way, I, not a condescending way. <laughs> relaxing is what I want to do when I'm kind of like not in a mood to learn a game or to yeah, really push yeah. hard to win. I just kind of wanted to sit there and play. I don't right. really care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Mike and I are a lot more visual when it comes to this stuff. Right. Um, thematic relaxation matters to us a lot. Mm-hmm. Like building a village, not relaxing. Uh, right. Taking a leisurely trip across Japan. Or picking herbs, relaxing. Like we're right. more like our type is is slightly different from yours, Tom. But obviously, sure, sure. not any more valid than yours. Um, no. 
That's neat. We're going to start. We're going to start doing something new here on our top tens list, folks. Is oh. I put up a poll on uh, Facebook. And ask people what their oh, choices were. And so we're going to get the people choice top 10 on these now, too. So if you go through Facebook, wow. you might see polls. So let's see how many crossovers we have here with the people. It's number All 10 right. okay. was, and they're going to, for the people, I'm going to read these off pretty quickly because they're going to pop up five at a time here. So number 10, welcome to. Number mm. nine, love letter. Number mm. eight, Dixit. Number seven, any game after the kids go to bed. <laughs> 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 which, which i voted for because that was a good pick uh -huh. number six splendor so that's the top that's the bottom five uh we mm -hmm. didn't put any of those games actually no. i don't find welcome to relaxing at all that one gets me stressed no. out right yeah I, I mean i love welcome to but sure it's, i don't find I'm it relaxing going, though oh all. please turn over the card i need <laughs> right yes all right let's go to the top five number five we got carcassonne Number four, Wingspan. Number three, mm -hmm. Azul. Number two, King Domino. And number one, Tokaido. And I should mention, number one won by a mile. So, actually, King Domino, Z, I thought I'm, maybe you I, might pick that one. Yeah, um, I could see it. I could see it being pretty relaxing. It's, um, yeah, seeing this tiny little village build up in front of you with sure. very low stakes kind of feel to it is, yeah. Um, my 11, I'll say it's my 11, you know, <laughs> I'm surprised that herbaceous isn't on there, but I think it's just not very well known. I Correct. definitely would recommend, and I think Mike would agree with me because it is yes. lesser known that if anybody likes the theme of this list and there's one thing you want to try to pursue, you've probably heard of most of these games. If you haven't heard of herbaceous, that's the one I would say. Seek that one out for something mm -hmm. little and relaxing. Well, I'm actually right. gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna look here on the list see if anyone even mentioned herbaceous. Uh, 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 I'm going down. I'm looking. Oh, there's I see chess. So I'm not thinking herbaceous <laughs> is gonna make it. Um, I'm down with the ones that just got one vote. Up oh, one vote for herbaceous. Wow. Wow. The wow. Tokaido I got think, uh, 94 votes. Woo. Herbaceous okay. was a, a, a Kickstarter. I, I don't know if it went to retail. I thought it did, but um, it, that could maybe, be playing against that. it as well. Right. Maybe that's um, it. But yeah, I, if you can get a hold of it, it's 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 definitely worth a shot. It's not an expensive game. It's a small game. Uh, good stuff. And an interesting list by the people, too. Uh, very different than our lists. Um, you know, I, I think, that, again, they were going for kind of these lighter uh, types of games, which... We had as well, but uh, just in a slightly different angle. I think a lot of those picks are familiarity relaxation. Right. Like, right. Right. I relax right. with Splendor because I've played it 200 times. Or exactly. I relax with Carcassonne because it's second nature. I've played it right. so much. Which, again, is totally valid, and I get that. Sure. Maybe people find relaxing not a game that is designed to be relaxing, but the one that they are mm -hmm. so comfortable with that it's right. now relaxing to play. They don't have to think about looking foolish, learning rules, uh, trying to win, figure out tactics yeah. or strategies. You can just play. So yeah, there's yeah, that yeah. too. Mm -hmm. All righty, folks. Well, that seems to be it. I'm all chilled. I'm going to take a nap now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually, folks, do relax during this time. Get some rest. Yes. We'll see you guys soon enough at some point. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be doing another top 10 list in a week from today on Thursday about our top 10 things, games we want to see reprinted with a new second edition or third edition, I guess. Um, and then tonight, of course, Dice Tower chat daily evening chat at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So join us for that. And until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Thank you. I'm Mike Delicio. Take care, everybody. See y'all all later. Bye-bye.